I'm Julie Pace, Washington Bureau Chief for the Associated Press, and this is Ground Game. The coronavirus pandemic ranks among one of the most consequential stories we have ever covered at the Associated Press in our 170-year history. Here to take you inside the outbreak is AP's Ralph Russo. From the Associated Press, this is Inside the Outbreak. I'm Ralph Russo. We plan to tap into a deep well of AP reporters around the world to bring you the stories of the coronavirus outbreak. That's right, stories, plural. The virus is affecting individuals, institutions, industries, governments all over the globe in myriad ways. The story of the coronavirus is actually dozens of stories intersecting and layering. What we hope is to bring you those stories in a way that informs, entertains, and hopefully provides some insight you can apply to your day-to-day lives. Along the way, maybe we can calm your nerves while you're social distancing. My full-time job here at the AP is sports. I'm the National College sports writer, mostly focusing on football. So my role on this show is simply to ask questions and facilitate the storytelling. The plan is for me to interview AP journalists about the stories they are covering. We may also bring in experts in relevant fields to help make sense of the news. As with the coronavirus, it's hard to say for sure how this podcast will evolve, but our mission will stay the same bring you news, facts, and analysis from people who are well-informed. My guest today is Ken Moritsugu, AP's News Director for Greater China. We'll talk to Ken about what lessons the United States might be able to learn from how the coronavirus outbreak played out in China and South Korea, once hotspots for coronavirus infections China and South Korea halted the spread of the virus by shutting down large parts of the country, imposing strict travel restrictions, social distancing measures, and vigorous testing. On March 19th, Wuhan, the Chinese city where the virus was first detected late last year, announced no new local infections. So we're talking with Ken Moritsugu. He is the AP's news director for China. Ken, thank you so much for joining me this morning. And I know it's been a lot of work and a lot of hard hours. So again, I'm really appreciative of you taking a little time out to talk to me about how you've covered the coronavirus. No problem. Happy to be here. So let's start with a very broad question, sort of the overarching topic of this podcast. And we're sort of hoping to look back to figure out what we can expect looking ahead. Can we look at how the outbreak swept through China and South Korea and gain any insight to how it will play out here in the United States? I think so. I don't think the situations are necessarily one-to-one. The outbreak started or was first noticed in December in a, a city called Wuhan, which is in central China. It wasn't immediately recognized for what it was, but by January, it had begun accelerating and spreading very rapidly within Wuhan and then eventually to a lot of Hubei province, which is a province of about 60 million people. At some point, authorities recognized things were uh, spinning out of control, and it happened to coincide with a big travel time in in China. So a lot of people were about to leave and head out and, and go to other parts of China. A lot of migrant workers were returning to their hometowns and that kind of thing. China decided at some point, the government decided at some point to basically cut off Hubei province to keep people from leaving the place, somewhat similar to what northern Italy has done recently. The thinking was obviously to to try to contain what was already becoming a very serious outbreak within the province from spreading to the rest of China and also overseas. The one problem was that it happened too late. They locked down Hubei province. People had already started traveling. They had had gone not only to other parts of China, but also... um, to neighboring countries in Asia, and and even farther afield, obviously, as they take vacations during this this period. So what you really had was a a kind of a slow seepage of the 
disease to other parts of China and then beyond that to other parts of Asia. And then just a really intense, horrible situation in this one province, Hubei, which, again, I think is similar to what's happening in, in northern Italy and you know, potentially could happen in, in parts of the United States. So I think there, there are two things to deal with. One is where the problem is intense and accelerating. You, you really have to just flood the area with medical equipment and experts and, and doctors and, and medical workers, find beds, and you know, China built temporary hospitals and converted gymnasiums into places to, to keep people because you need to prevent contact with the infected people because it, as we've discovered, it spreads very easily. So you have that in, in, in a very um, intense, in these, in these intense areas. And then secondly, I think you, you want to prevent it from spreading to the rest of the country, right, in, 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 the, in the United States case. And so you need to find ways just to restrict people from, from traveling and moving around. When, when you say cut off that Wuhan, or how? You know, how intense were the restrictions and... Uh, as someone who's lived in the United States, do you think the United States could do some of those things? Well, it's obviously very difficult to replicate in the United States and in a lot of countries the kind of things that the Chinese government can do. It's a more authoritarian state. People tend to do what the government says to do. What happened in, in China is, um, again, within this one province, you could not go in or out of the province. And even within the province, you couldn't travel around the province. And then within the, the, the place you lived, you couldn't really go out except to go to go buy groceries or maybe go to the drugstore if you need medical supplies. It was, it was very, very controlled. So were they enforcing these restrictions with, let's say, military, with uh, law enforcement officers? Because I think we're getting to the point here in the United States where we're starting to wonder if that needs to be done, which, of course, would be a massive step forward for the United States and something that probably wouldn't go over very yeah. well. Well, China's a little different because it has um, actually has neighborhood committees for most neighborhoods, even within Beijing. There's hundreds of neighborhood committees. And they have the initial responsibility to kind of set up the rules and enforce the regulations. But yeah, police were there. Police were used, I think, to deal with people who were disobedient, who didn't want to follow the regulations. But I would say that you know most people in China follow the regulations. I mean, so take a step away outside of Hubei and the rest of China. There was no formal lockdown, but people were basically told to stay at home. You know, people are working at home as they're now beginning to do in other parts of the world. And you know, the, the streets just went dead and quiet in Beijing, in the capital. I mean, everything was closed except for the supermarkets. You know, they really managed to keep it down. And then if people, you know, violate the restrictions, you know, people take photos and post on social media and, and almost shame these people and say, you know, what are you doing? You know, you're spreading the disease. You're not cooperating. You know, we all need to work together to stop this kind of thing. So there is maybe more of a communal feeling here in, in China that helps the government control this kind of situation. If, if I could swing over to South Korea, because again, I think the narrative is that South Korea did somewhat of a model job of containing the disease. I think that interpretation as it crosses overseas can sometimes get muddled. So what did South Korea do so well? And were they as efficient in containing the disease as sort of, again, the way things are portrayed here in the States? Well, I think in a similar sort of pattern to China, the biggest challenge is acting fast enough. And initially, as in China, as in South Korea, as in Europe, as in the United States, nobody acts fast enough because if you're a government, it's very hard to restrict what people do, right? Before there's actual real hard evidence that something bad is happening. But by the time that's evident, it's, it's almost too late. So South Korea did in fact have a very large outbreak. Suddenly the attention shifted from China to South Korea, and in this one city in Daegu, it just spread like wildfire very quickly, it became a, a major outbreak. So in, in a sense, they, they started too late, like everybody starts too late. I think once they realized the seriousness of the situation, and it, it took it took a while, like everywhere, in the, in the beginning there, they kind of said, oh, maybe we can, it's just in this one area and it's fine. And, one, 
and will have sort of voluntary stay-at-home restrictions. But I think within two or three days, they were you know, declaring a national emergency, and they just sent in a lot of medical workers and experts to basically track down everybody they could find who had the disease. They really tested a lot, make sure they found everybody who was infected and everybody who had contact with it, those people and isolate them from the rest of the population. And that's you know, ultimately what you have to do is to separate the infected people from the rest of the population because otherwise it just spreads very quickly. Um, do you think we can look toward those countries and project a timetable for China? I guess it ran like the, the worst of it where it started in December and then had a very rough period. And now in Wuhan, they're reporting no new infections that the disease has been sort of tamped down. Do you think we can look at that timetable and use it as a, again, hopefully a projection for here, what happens in the United States? I think South Korea is is probably a better example. The situation in Wuhan was really bad. There are tens of thousands of cases in a city, admittedly a big city of 11 million people, but there were lots and lots of cases. The health system was overwhelmed. And because of that, the disease spread even more widely because they didn't have enough beds to isolate people from the rest of the population. They sent people home, people infected other members of their families. It really spiraled completely out of control. And that's, you know, that's the worst case scenario, what you absolutely want to avoid, I think. I think at least at this point, we can be reasonably optimistic that we may have more of a South Korea situation where, you know, it was more a matter of weeks, not months before they were able to get the outbreak under control. And the one last one for you, and I think I'm going to use this question for everybody going forward, uh, is when did you realize the enormity of this story? When did it hit you that this is something unique and maybe something that is, quite frankly, history changing? I'd say there, there were several turning points in this story. But I think the story in China, the big event was when the government announced at three in the morning not unlike Italy again, that they were going to shut down the city of Wuhan. By 10 a.m. the next day, train service had been, the train station was closed. You could not take a train out of the city. The airport was closed. You know, they just said, no one can leave the city and no one can go into the city, with very rare exceptions. You realize the government must must know something, right, if they're doing this really drastic kind of almost unheard of measure, right, of, of shutting down a whole city. And within a few days, they had expanded it to the whole province, which, as I said, was about 60 million people. That was one turning point. But, I, you know, I think it, it took a while to realize the broader impact economically that this was going to have. You know, China basically shut down its economy in most ways to stop the disease from spreading, you know, which is not an easy thing to do. So I think it took a, a while for, for that to sort of sink in and to realize that this is something that's really going to grow. Ken Moritsugu is the AP's news director for Greater China. Thank you for joining me on Inside the Outbreak, Ken. Okay, sure. Thanks, Ralph, for bringing us the latest on the coronavirus outbreak. That's it for this episode of Ground Game. We'll be here every step of the way during this extraordinary moment in American politics and American life, giving you all the news you need to know. Be sure to tell a friend about us, and please subscribe on Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. From the Westwood One Podcast Network. Mm -hmm.